This is the Connect Radio Breakfast Show. Good morning and welcome. Told you it would be a busy one today. Lots of things to get through. Although that does make it sound like it's bothering. It's not. It's a loads of things to get through here. Honestly, rushed off my feet. So today, and in fact, I think it was about a month and a half ago that we spoke to a lady called Joanne Armstrong, and she's from Oasis Community Housing. And she was on because they very kindly decided to stand with us and run a campaign. So what we want to do is to make as much fuss about them as possible and to make you aware of the great work that they do. So this month, we're talking to David Foster. Good morning, David. Good morning, Gareth. It's great to be here. Listen to that accent. Um, <laughs> so every member of staff, um, do you have to have a Newcastle accent to work at Oasis Community Housing? It really helps if you have a Geordie accent in the North East, but we've got some great projects in Sunderland and London as well who would really hate to be called Geordies, so we've got to keep it, we've got to keep it sensitive. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining with us because it's due to people like you and organisations like Oasis Community Housing that we can actually keep broadcasting. So thank you for Brilliant. that. And you guys do such wonderful work. And Joanne, she was telling us all about how, you know, homelessness, it's something that it doesn't just affect a certain type of person. And I remember speaking to her actually, and you could say that some of us are only a few decisions or a few paychecks away from being homeless. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, for, for a lot of people like myself, and, and, and I'm assuming a lot of your listeners, we have um, a whole range of safety nets. So we've got friends, we've got family, we've got jobs, we've got savings. Um, and, and, and that keeps us insulated from homelessness. But for a lot of people who perhaps had really difficult beginnings in life or who have had just a series of hard knocks, then homelessness can come dangerously close. Um, so, so none of us are immune to it. And when you work with people who are experiencing homelessness, you really start to see that it, it, it can happen to anyone. We've had, you know, the people that a lot of your listeners would assume will be homeless, but then we come across teachers, we come across people who've worked in the NHS in the past and for various reasons, they, they, they've ended up in housing crisis, and it's really sad. So it can happen to anyone. And how do Oasis help to tackle that? So we have a number of, a, a wide range of projects. So so what we, we try to do is prevent it from happening, first of all. So we have um, something called our, our Empower Project, which is specifically for women who who are at risk of homelessness because of domestic abuse, because we recognise that that's a big trigger and a big factor for a lot of women who become homeless. And then we have something called our Aspire Project, which is um, about helping people who who just need that little bit of a leg up, a little bit of help to find a job, because we know that finding a job is a real key um, factor in, in either escaping homelessness or just staying out of it altogether. Um, and, and then when people are actually in it, We've got some crisis services, so things like a place called Basis where people can go and get a shower and get a change of clothes, get their laundry done, get some advice and support. Um, and then we have some support accommodation houses as well where people can come and live with us for, you know, one or two years until they get back on their feet and then they're in a position to rent their own flat or find, find a council house. So many of us take it for granted that, you know, we can have a shower. We can go to the toilet yeah. where we need to, and we can do all these kind of things. In fact, I don't know about you, but one of the beautiful things I love doing at the end of the day is just sitting on the sofa and watching TV. It's just yeah. it's just those things where, you know, sitting on the sofa, I don't have to think, oh, have I got water to actually have a drink? Yeah. Well, you know, the thought that there's people around the UK, in fact, the thought that there's anybody around the world who can't have these basic things like a shower or go to the toilet is awful. But to think it's happening in such a rich country as the UK, it's dreadful, isn't it? It is. And I think, you know, when we had that heat wave last week, um, you know, for a lot of us, it was uncomfortable, a little bit of an inconvenience. If you had the week off, it might have been quite nice to sit in your garden. But for, for a lot of our, our guys who were helping, it was a real issue because people think about homeless people in the winter and they think about giving them blankets and things like that. But actually in a heat wave, it's equally as dangerous for them. So we had, um, we were out there making sure that they had water. Um, we've got a new member of staff who, who, who's, who's really, really nice at the moment. She ordered, she arranged for um, 
an ice cream van to come to our uh, homeless crisis drop in so that they could have ice creams, you know, things that a lot of us would take for granted, you know, you stick your hand in your pocket, you buy yourself or your kids an ice cream. They can't do that. So, so having an ice cream van come along was great. And then, you know, motor services, the ones that have all of the service stations along the, the, the A1 and the various motorways, they gave, gave us a whole load of ice creams for our, um, the people that were helping as well. So, so things like that, people don't think about in a heat wave, being homeless is, is still a massive issue, a massive problem. And it's so nice because things like that, it's not just practical help, but it also helps us to realise that these are human beings. Yeah. And I think sometimes that can be the problem, can't it, that you actually see them on the streets and we don't actually categorise it as that's somebody's son, that's somebody's daughter, and that is actually a human being. Absolutely, and we've got... um. A lady who's working for us at the moment called Mandy, and she's, you can hear her, her story, read about her story on our website. She was homeless once, and now she works for us. And um, she's involved in a campaign with Amnesty International at the moment, which is, um, you know, just trying to, 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 to look into that exact thing that you're talking about there. Um, she thinks that one of the biggest issues around homelessness and one of the biggest human rights abuses is people just don't see the person behind um the label of homelessness and and for every person that we see they've got skills and assets as well as the, the issues that they're facing and they've got a story so how can we help you because you well not just you personally but you you and your team you're out and about all the time doing yeah. practical things to help these people so what can we do to help you to help them well, there's a few few things that you could help us with. So first of all, we're a Christian charity, which is why we're linking up with you guys at Connect. Um, I think one of the most powerful things that uh, the church and the Christian community around the UK can do is to pray for us. So, um, you know, just, just keep us in your prayers. Remember the homeless. Remember Oasis Community Housing in your prayers and, and just offer that up offer offer that up to God. We've got um, some prayer resources on our website. So if you went on our website, oasiscommunityhousing.org, you could go to our Get Involved site, section of the site, and there's some prayer resources that you can look at there or sign up to. Um, the other thing is in this really difficult time of cost of living crisis, then if you are able to give, if you're in a position to give, then becoming a regular monthly donor or even just giving a one-off gift is really, really helpful for us. So again, you can do that at the website, voicescommunityhousing.org, and then click on the donate button. Um, and, and, you know, as a charity, we face all of the same bills that are going up that everyone else around the country is facing. So it will really help in the next couple of months if people are allowed to, are able to ally again with us and, and sort of support us in that. Well, you don't need me to tell you that they're doing great work. So go and find them on the socials as well, because they've got loads of events. Um, I see all kinds of stuff going on to help raise money for the charity. Um, I think you did golf about a month and a half we ago. Did golf, yeah, yeah, that was you really good. You look like you're the type of person, David, who would have taken that quite seriously. I was the type of person who was melting on the golf course, actually. <laughs> so, so no, I didn't take it too seriously. Um, there was some very, very experienced golfers there on that day. But you're right, we've got some great events coming up. So Gateshead Football Club, who actually came top of their league uh, at the last season, they are supporting us um, this year. So we've got an event on Friday, going along and talking to 100 business people from the northeast to um, tell them about the charity and get them involved. And then we've got a comedy night coming up, all sorts of events that you can, again, find out about on the website. And if you're in the Northeast or in London, you might be able to sign up and come and join us. So have a look, oasiscommunityhousing.org. And from there, you can find out more about the charity. You can also donate to the great work that they do because we take so much of this for granted. You know, you were talking about the heat. And I was thinking that I was sat at home like many of us were and we had water, we had ice pops, and it was a case of yeah. I'll just walk into the kitchen and have another one. You know, sun cream, another thing as well, where I don't think many of us listening to this have to think, can we actually afford sun cream? cream so we don't burn from the Absolutely. sun so there's all these kind of things that we just take for granted so much and pray for this organization they're doing great work they're really hands-on with what they do and if you do feel that you can make a donation then go to their website oasiscommunityhousing.org and give them a follow on the socials as well david it's been a pleasure thank you very much and keep up the great work won't you thanks so much gareth it's been great to be here appreciate it